And welcome into Gator Bites on the 1010XL.com podcast network. Also being simulcast on the Florida Gator 1010XL Facebook page. Today's Gator podcast is brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialist. For the highest quality care, you can rely on Southeast Orthopedic Specialist for any orthopedic injury or concern. You can log on to their website, as always, by going to se-ortho.com. A little different today. Don't I'm forget George Moore, my guy. Oh, yeah, that's right. George yeah, Moore. Yeah, man. George oh, Moore. I, I Update. I picked out the truck, but I have not had time to go get the truck. But when I get it, it is absolutely beautiful. So all you guys need to head out to uh, George Moore Chevrolet on Atlantic Boulevard. Um, good selection. Good people. Go say, go say hi to Justin. I'm not sure if it's still their slogan, but growing up in Jacksonville, I'm always going to say, yeah. need I say more? I meant There's to ask no- him that last week, and I forgot. All right, so I'm coming to you from my house, non-COVID-related, non-flu-related or anything. Denny, you can appreciate this with two sons. My four-year-old is in preschool, and he brought home something from preschool that walloped me and his mother this past uh, 24 hours. I can't appreciate that because my wife was a teacher for 24 years. Oh, God. So we had it coming from three different ways, but yeah, man, no, that's Get better, bro. Get better. Yeah, and and I'm, don't come I'm in a, here when you're sick. I'm going to let it, the people out. I'm going to let all you in to our group text. Hackers talking about, I'm going to come in. I'm a tough guy. Like, hell no, you ain't coming in. Like, I don't want to get sick. I love your presence, but no, I, I don't love you that much, Hack. I actually thought about it as recently as about 30 minutes ago, but I was like, nah, I think Denny will be upset. <laughs> but I am on the men, so we're good to go. All right. There's a big one tomorrow in Lexington. All of a sudden, Denny, this game between Florida – and Kentucky, maybe we didn't think it was going to be a big one a couple of weeks ago, but high noon in the Commonwealth tomorrow, Florida's got an opportunity, don't they? Well, you do. I mean, they do. You look up, and all of a sudden, if you can win this game, I mean, you're four and one, probably inside the top seventeen in the country. If you if you get a win, maybe fifteen in the country, depending on what else happens. And and then you look at the schedule ahead of you, and and you're like, okay, we got a chance here. We got a chance at you know eight nine wins which a couple weeks ago seemed impossible. You know, there were people talking about three wins, four wins, right? Um, But but you got to tip your cap to the way that that team and that staff um, has just kind of responded and didn't panic. And and I loved, you know, they didn't play great last week, but, but who cares, right? Who cares? I mean, Billy Napier set that up perfectly, talked about how they had a bad week of practice. And like I said last week, I think that was going to be the narrative, whether they did or not. And that was what he was going to tell them to keep them, you know, on the right track after Tennessee. But man, they, to me, it just looks like a team all of a sudden that has something to them. Mm-hmm. They're huge up front. They're physical. Um, at, at times they get a really good rhythm offensively. And, and I think the key is like, you just got to keep feeding ETN. The games that he gets involved with, the games that you just let that guy go in, man, he's he's special, dude. You just got you got you got to keep getting the ball into his hands. You know, I made the argument earlier this week on Hacker After Dark, and there was some pushback from people. So let me get your thoughts. If they win tomorrow to get to four and one, and like you said, top sixteen, top seventeen in the country, you could argue Billy Napier is ahead of the curve, right? He's ahead of expectation. I don't know how many diehard Gator fans even would have had them four and one after five games. To me, my thought going in was Utah, Tennessee, Kentucky. Can you get one of those to be, to be three and two? Well, you already have one in your back pocket, right? If you go into Kentucky tomorrow and win four and one, I think Florida's maybe ahead of schedule. Yeah. I see what you're saying. I I think there's always going to be a, a thing in Gator fans mind and rightfully so, by the way, I, I I'm kind of with them on this is you, you should be expected to beat Kentucky. Like that, that's just what it is. It's no different than like if you're a Kentucky fan and in basketball, like you're expected to beat Florida in basketball. It's just kind of what it is. And so I, I don't think – I think winning tomorrow gets the fan base excited. Um, but I think this is like an expectation of Florida fans, especially Florida fans who've been Florida fans for a long time, right? I mean, we we distinctly remember Kentucky just did not beat Florida. And then you kind of saw Kentucky give a couple of games away. Like, oh, they got it. Florida got out lucky and then the series kind of changed a little bit but I think the bigger thing that for me hack is going into this game 
Florida lines up for the first time in a long time. They match up well with Kentucky. Mm -hmm. It's like Kentucky likes to run that ball. Like just because you run spread doesn't mean you're not a physical football team, right? You're just spreading the defense out. You can run spread and still be a very physical football team. And that's what Kentucky wants to do. And that's what Florida wants to do. But Florida is massive and they're deep in, in, in that up front on defense. Right. And so if, if you're going into this game and you're Kentucky, this may be one of those situations where you look at it and go, you know what? We may not be able to do what we really like to do as a program, as a culture, and as a team. We may have to do some things that maybe we're not quite as good with, and therefore you match up really well with them. And so I, I, I think Florida's defense is the X factor here. I, and it's not about the blitzes. It's not about anything other than tip your cap to Billy Napier because he's put together some depth at a position that everybody searches for just four in he's got six seven eight and they're huge and they seem to be playing well and they seem to have a good plan for getting them on and off the field you know to me denny when i look at this game um the fact that it's in lexington we'll get to that in a moment but i look at florida's opponents to this point utah tennessee kentucky has played basically nobody you could argue their toughest game was vanderbilt now, maybe this is media guy talking here. You tell me. You you live in this world. Playing tougher competition, I would think Florida is probably more prepared for this game tomorrow than maybe Kentucky is, who hasn't seen a team like Florida yet. Yeah, I mean, probably so. But the majority of those guys that are playing for Kentucky have been in big games before, right? I mean, th this isn't – there's not a nerve factor. There's not anything like that. I think – I I don't know. I, I – it definitely makes sense what you're saying, and it definitely is an advantage for Florida. I just don't know how big of an advantage, and I don't know about the overall health of Kentucky. Like, sometimes you play that softer schedule. Um, maybe you come out a little bit healthier. Maybe your your backups have seen a little bit more time than what they would have in other situations, although Kentucky's been in some fairly tight games, uh, you know, it, it, deep into the game, so I don't know that that's the case. I do think it plays, Hack, but I, I don't know to what degree. Like these, that by the time you get to the SEC, you, man, these players and coaches have coached in plenty of big games, mm -hmm. right? They they know how to manage those emotions, and and it's after that first series, after those first couple series, you know, other than like some spurts during the game, that energy and that emotion don't matter. It's it's we're gonna line up and we're gonna hit each other, and whoever hits the hardest and 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 executes the best is going to win. That's what football comes down to. Um, I, I'm I'm excited about this game. I don't know what's going to happen. I think I have an idea. I think it's probably going to be an ugly game on both sides by design. But I do think that this is a chance for Florida to say, hey, you know, we're we're trending in the right direction. And to your point, Hack, like we're trending a little quicker than what people thought we were going to be trending before the year started. And I think the SEC did Florida solid too. A noon kick in, in the yeah. common, obviously a night game would have been Maybe a little rougher. And, and look, Florida's been to Salt Lake City. And I don't think noon in Lexington will be any more volatile than 7 o'clock in Salt Lake City was on opening night. And the reason I bring that up is if you look at the Gator depth chart this week, it's shocking. One starter as a senior of the 22 guys that are starting on the depth chart. I don't think, Denny, and maybe they're becoming more aware of it as the weeks go by, this Gator team has to be one of the youngest in the conference, if not the country. I mean, how many Power 5 programs have one of your starting 22 being a senior? The other 21 guys are juniors or under. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I, but but to your point, I mean, it makes you feel good about the future, which is really what we're talking about here. I don't think anybody thinks Florida's going to win a national championship this year, go to the playoffs or – may probably not even go to the SEC championship, right? But you start to if if you you start to beat these teams that in the past you had a handle on when you were playing at that level and you start to beat them in the ways that you beat them in the past, then that's kind of that first step. You know, it's it, it we see it. It's 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 the um it's kind of the formula. It's like a team starts to get good and you start to get and this isn't just Florida, this is everybody. You start to get really confident and then you get a you get a team that just has a better day, day than you, and then everything unravels. And so your first step is avoid those games, right? Win the games you're supposed to win the way you're supposed to win them. And I, I don't know. Again, I'm going just off of the logos, Florida and Kentucky. I'm not even going off of talent. 
Florida is supposed to win this game every single year. That's a, they they recruit better. They now have better facilities. They have more coaches. They have more resources in football. You're supposed to win that football game. So I think your first step as a program with a new new coach in the right direction is you win those football games the way you're supposed to win them. Today's Gator Bites podcast is brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialist for the highest quality care. You can rely on Southeast Orthopedic Specialist for any orthopedic injury or concern. Again, you can log on to their website by going to se-ortho.com. So thank you to Southeast Orthopedic Specialist for their continued support. And Denny Thompson, your friends there at George Moore Chevrolet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But everybody knows about George Moore. Just, I'm just reminding y'all, if you're in the market for a car, then that's where you go, especially a Chevy. You go to George Moore, you see Justin um, over at George Moore, and you tell him that, that you heard about him on Gator Bites. I heard something this week that I didn't know. You're in the quarterback world there at six points. Maybe you did know a little more about this. So apparently Graham Mertz, before he committed to Florida, was in play at Kentucky. And there was a thought he was going to go to Kentucky until maybe they went to greener pastures elsewhere to get Devin Leary. And again, I hadn't heard this, but I heard it from two different people this week. And whether you want to call it a revenge factor, a chip on the shoulder, whatever, maybe Graham Mertz has a little added motivation going to Lexington tomorrow. Do you remember anything along those lines? No, I don't. Uh, I, that In my world, that transfer portal time is wild, man. It's like you need a spreadsheet to keep track with who's calling who, what's this person's price, like what's the depth chart behind it, who's they got committed. So, you know, we had – we have so many guys that go through that process that I, I don't really pay attention to anybody else, but that wouldn't surprise me. And I, and I don't know, that's a fairly normal thing. Hack. I, I, I don't know that that would be a reason for really, you know, old school, like motivation. Um, I mean, Florida probably had that done to them, you know, as well by the three or four different quarterbacks as well. So I just, it's kind of the nature of the beast. Uh, you kind of know, going in, I get it with the draft, like teams are directly passing on you. But in the college landscape right now, I I don't think with guys in the transfer portal, that's that big of a deal. But I'll tell you this, like, I, I like Leary. I like Leary a lot. Um, I'm I'm really starting to like Mertz, man. Like, yeah. this guy is – he just shows such an awareness to the game and such a – like, the game looks fluid to him. Like, it doesn't look like he's having to force anything. He's tough as nails. He's not scared of that part of things, and and he doesn't let that – doesn't let pressure really dictate his decisions. Um, maybe like, uh, just to give an example, maybe like a Zach Wilson would when you're watching that, right? Graham Merce doesn't have that in him, and, and you can get a long way with that. And I, I, I actually think he's probably the perfect quarterback for the situation that the Florida Gators are in right now. Graham Merce, to me, is the second most pleasant surprise so far in four games. I'll tell you what number one is. Now, granted, McNeese State and um, Charlotte, right? But you also have Tennessee and Utah in there. The Florida defense is ranked number one in the conference and fifth nationally in a lot of categories right now. I mean, they're getting after it. Do you buy in Austin Armstrong and what he's doing on the defensive side of the ball? Uh, I, I do. I do for a lot of reasons. It's funny because I that first play against Utah being the touchdown, and that's the first thing you saw. I I think in a lot of ways for Florida fans, there was like PTSD with there with that, right? Like, oh gosh, here we go again. And then it took a little while for me at least, I won't speak for everybody, to develop trust of okay, Florida's defense is actually pretty good. But I, I do think it's a pleasant surprise, and I do think it's here to stay because of that personnel up front. I, I think that personnel up front, and again, that's coaching. Like they put those guys in that position. So I'm not taking credit away from coaching. I don't think it's as much scheme right now as it is. There's just some big bodies up there, mm -hmm. right? And when you have big bodies that eat space like that, what you do behind them, you can do so many things. And you don't even need pressure from those guys, right? You just need them to occupy their person and maybe one more. Like you need that offense to pay attention to those big dudes up front. And then behind that, you can do whatever you want to do, and a lot of times you can run free doing it, right? So I, that that's the reason I think that this defense, for the most part, 
is legit and here to stay. I, I, I think you're going to run into teams, and maybe Kentucky has a little bit of, of this in them. They're not going to double. They feel like they can do what they need to do and get to that second level. Like They feel like, okay, we're good enough that we can go zone and we don't have to spend as much time on this 380 pound guy. Like we're guards going to take him over and we're going to get to second level. Like, Mm -hmm. and then, then you start to see, okay, that second level, how well are they avoiding blocks, taking angles, things like that. But I, I I think it's legit. I think like you said before, they're young. Um, and, And so I think it's a reason to be excited for Florida fans. What's the key tomorrow in game planning against Devin Leary in that offense? Um, I think just keep everything in front of you, make them go down the, go go down the field. And I know that's a boring brand of football and people hate to hear that, but your, your defense is built, <clears throat> excuse me, your defense is built where if you can just do that, then you're going to have eventually a second down where you get a sack and now it's, you know, third and, and 21 and, you know, they're punting or kick or, or attempting a long field goal. So I think just avoid the big plays. If you avoid the big plays, against Kentucky and that's going to keep the crowd on their hands. That's going to keep everything kind of going. I think that's the key is applied pressure at the right times. Don't take too many risks defensively and, and just keep everything in front of you and tackle. And and if you do that, like, I, I don't see how really how you lose this game. Now I'm sure you're about to ask this offensively to me is the bigger deal. I, I, I think they got to open it up. I, you know, I said, you got to get the ball to ETN and you do, you, 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 I, I love all the running backs, but ETN's the guy. Like you, you got to find ways to get ETN the ball, pass game, run game, whatever you want to do. But then you also, man, it, it. I think Graham is good enough. Like let let's open this thing up a little bit and let, let's see what this guy has. I I kind of trust him, don't you? Like I kind of trust that Graham Mertz is not going to make the critical mistake. So I, I I think at some point you got to put that on his shoulders and go, hey man, we trust you. If you see that shot, man, let's take it. And it appears Tyree Wilson will be available tomorrow, too, which uh, you could argue, other than Pearsall and ETN, he is their third best playmaker. So they're going to have a full arsenal on that offense. Let's get to tomorrow. First off, Southeast Orthopedic Specialist. They bring you Gator Bites every week here on 1010XL.com and the Florida Gator 1010XL Facebook page. Thank you to the good Dr. Kevin Murphy and everybody over at Southeast Orthopedic Specialist for their continued support of Gator Bites. If you need an orthopedic specialist in Northeast Florida, we certainly recommend Southeast Orthopedic Specialist. And of course, welcome again to our friends at George Moore Chevrolet. You'll hear all about them as we move forward here on the Gator Bites podcast. Denny, it's great when you have seven SEC games on a Saturday with there being 14 teams. We did my Wolfson math on that. (laughs) It's SEC versus SEC. Right. day tomorrow for seven ball games some good ones too let's begin with the oldest rivalry in the south georgia and auburn auburn at home for whatever that's worth any chance for the tigers tomorrow uh yeah i think there's always a chance in that rivalry i i just got back from athens actually um i spent a couple days with carson up there and it it, listen i mean this is carson's first road what's that are you signing all those NIL deals for him? <laughs> uh, no comment. Um, no, I mean, I think, you know, this is Carson's first road start. And and it's, it's you know, this is an Auburn team that's wounded, like, in the sense of they just can't find their offense. And this it's not Hugh Freeze. Like, they just haven't been able to find an offense for a little while in Auburn. So, and, and anything can happen at Auburn. Like, it feels like. Auburn is the place we see like the craziest stuff happen, right? So, yeah, I think Georgia's going in there, and Georgia hasn't played their best ball either. So, I think Georgia's going in there with their head on a swivel, and and they understand. Both teams understand the urgency of the situation. Like Georgia needs to put together a full game. They need to play their brand of football, and Auburn understands. Like, okay, if we're going to take this next step, man, this game's got to be a game in the fourth quarter. We got to find some offense somewhere. And there's been spurts so far in the season where teams have found offense against Georgia, unlike times in the past. So I think it's kind of a race. Does the Georgia get what they needed to get fixed before Auburn exploited it? Like, and, 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 you know, you tend to think you give Kirby the benefit of the doubt on that defensively, 
that that he's going to fix whatever there is. But, uh, you know, I, a lot of people have issues with Georgia's offense. I, I don't. I, I think Georgia's offense is slowly – you're starting to see things start to come together. You know, they, they still don't have Lab McConkey, which that guy's a dude. Mm-hmm. So when he comes back, I don't know if it's this week or when he's coming back, but when he comes back, that'll help. But that, that's a heck of a game. Um, I'm interested to see how that thing goes. Tomorrow, the SEC East will figure a lot out, not only Florida, Kentucky. I'm also very interested in South Carolina, Tennessee. Was Tennessee a one-hit wonder last year? And are they coming back to the pack? Because if they lose to South Carolina tomorrow, Denny, that'll be kind of the narrative, right? That's a big game for the Volunteers tomorrow. Yeah, I don't think they will lose, but I I, I do think that this is very valuable. These next couple weeks leading into that Georgia game, if you're Tennessee, you need to make that Georgia game mean something, and you've got a hard schedule. So it, it it's I think this is critical time for Hypel because Hypel is that that hot name that people want to go play for. We talked about this a couple weeks ago, right? Like you you got you got to stack these up. You can't it can't be one of these. Well, we just really liked Hendon Hooker. We got really lucky with him. No, you you have to stack these things up. And they have you know Joe Milton as talented as he is. The guy behind him is insanely talented. I, I've known Nico for a long long time since he was like eighth grade. Right. This guy is like first pick in the draft talented um, if he continues to develop. But you can't you, for to, for that to happen, like you got to continue to recruit at a high level and to continue to recruit at a high level. You have to beat the teams that you're going up against for recruits. And you can't when you lose to a South Carolina. Well, now you're you're kind of putting yourself into their league. You're, you're trying to get somewhere else recruiting. You're trying to get where Florida and Georgia and, and, and Alabama currently reside. So this is a huge game in these next few weeks are huge uh for the Tennessee Volunteers and specifically Josh Heupel not not from he's going to lose his job because he's not but from a where he was taking this program and the trajectory for that to continue on its course like he he needs to find ways to to win the games he should and he's got to find a way like he's got to beat Alabama or Georgia right like that's got to happen so tall tall task ahead of them you have what essentially could be an SEC West elimination game it certainly would be for Ole Miss with a loss Ole Miss, LSU, that should be a good one. Yeah, I, I don't know uh, what either one of those teams are. I mean, I, I think they're both pretty good. Um, I think the West is just wild right now. I mean, it, it, the West is what Alabama are you getting? What LSU are you getting? Um, you know, Ole Miss, I just – I don't think that Ole Miss has the guys that – of all these teams that we – you know, always a big game when Ole Miss plays Alabama or LSU, and we always talk about Lane Kiffin, and we always talk about, oh, man, watch out, because they have pulled those upsets before. But at a base core level, I just don't think they have the dudes that those guys have. And so if, if something special doesn't happen, then then they're usually going to lose those games just because there's a talent deficiency compared to, to those teams. Now, if you put them against a team that has equal talent, Lane Kiffin's proven like he – he may put 40 up, but when you start putting them against these teams that maybe just have a little bit more up front than they have, I think that's where Ole Miss struggles. And that's, I think that's certainly LSU. Let's wrap it up with Lexington tomorrow. High noon, the Gators and the Wildcats. Of course, you'll hear it on 1010 XL and 92.5 FM. I've been going back and forth all week, Denny. And to me, the only reason I'm making this pick, it's very simple. If the game was in Gainesville, I'd be picking Florida. The game's in Lexington. And because the game's in Lexington, um, I, I think Florida may beat themselves. I think we, we might be talking next week about penalties. They've had penalty problems up there, a costly turnover, something along those lines. I think it's going to be a frustrating day from that standpoint. Because I think Kentucky will get a break in the fourth quarter and ultimately win by a field goal. Wow, so you got Kentucky winning. I do. But again, I do th- I don't necessarily know if it's Kentucky winning or if it's Florida throwing the game away. Uh, I, because they've had problems in Lexington with penalties and things along those lines. I hope I'm wrong. But I do have Kentucky winning by a field goal. Yeah, I, I think Florida I think that game for Florida was Utah. I think they felt that they felt it happening um and and if you're a good team you learn from that. Right. And and you don't allow that to happen. I think the key in this game is Devin Leary. I, I, I think he's a really good player. I, I'm if if Kentucky lets him open up and Florida lets him get going, um, this could be that type of game. Kind of what I said before. Like if if Florida can't keep everything in front of them and they allow those big plays 
especially middle of the field plays with Devin Leary, then, then yeah, it, it could be. But I don't think that happens. I, I, I think Florida's got enough defensively um, that they're going to be able to keep that into check. And, and you know, I, I think it's a pretty – I, I don't know. I, I common sense approach to to this game. So I think it's probably what they'll do is they'll they'll probably come in and out of man zone. The zone will be off coverage, and it'll be the thing that your uncle yells about watching the game. But that guy's playing ten yards off of that receiver. Like it'll be that type of thing. But there's a plan to that, right? Like just make them make them drive. I, I think Florida wins the game, and I, I like I think Florida puts up somewhere in that high twenties, like twenty seven, you know, thirty. The thing I don't know is like, is it 27 to 24 or is it 27 to 10? Mm-hmm. Right. And and that's where the whole Devin Leary thing is. And to your point, like if you come in fourth quarter, it's a one score game. You're on the road. Anything can happen. I think it's important that you go into that fourth quarter up two scores. It's a big one tomorrow. The Gators and the Wildcats. We'll be back to review it next week. I'll be back in studio as Vanderbilt comes in. And that's the thing, Danny, if they beat Kentucky, not to get too far ahead of the story, a Vandy team that looks kind of down this year. I mean, all of a sudden, Vegas had the over-under win total at five and a half for the entire year. Mm-hmm. If you beat Kentucky tomorrow and you beat Vandy at home, you're at five wins before the middle of October. And I yeah. think at that point, people would be talking about Florida as maybe one of the bigger surprises in the country so far. This is a big game, man. This is a big game because of what you're talking about, just the energy factor. Like it is what it is. You win this game. You start off four and one. You start, you're in the top fifteen. You got a top five recruiting class. Things are looking good in Gainesville. Mm-hmm. You, you, with a loss, man, a lot of that changes. A whole there's a whole lot of questions that come up. So I'm excited to see it. Um, I mean, th- I think this is where we wanted to be. Like after that Utah game, if you'd have said, "Hey, this is going to be the situation going to Kentucky," everybody listening to this would have taken it. So now it's on Florida to kind of take that opportunity and let's let's see what they can do with it. Thank you to Southeast Orthopedic Specialist. Thank you to George Moore Chevrolet for bringing you this edition of Gator Bites. He is Denny Thompson. I'm the hacker, Ryan Green. We'll talk to you next week right here on Gator Bites, 1010XL.com and the Florida Gator 1010XL Facebook page.